This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector dice illustration using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Inkscape, the first thing we want to do is set up our documents so that we are all working with a similar workflow. To do that, we'll come up here to where it says View, make sure you have Custom selected, and then we'll come up here to where it says Zoom and zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then up here in the Snapping menu, I just want to click this icon over here to the top left that says Enable Snapping. As you can see, I already have it enabled. And these are the options we're going to want enabled for this tutorial. Right here where it says Snap Nodes, Pads, and Handles, enable that. And then over here where it says snap to cusp nodes and then right next to it where it says snap to smooth nodes. And once we've done that, I'm going to open up the align and distribute menu with this icon over here. Or you could press control shift A where it says relative to. I want to set that to last selected and then I'll open up the um, fill and stroke menu over here with this icon. Or you could press control shift and F on your keyboard to get that open. So once we have that open, the first thing we want to do is create a polygon. So I'm going to come over here to the stars and polygons tool. And over here from these settings, I want to choose Polygon rather than Star. Where it says Corners, I want to make sure we have six. And then Rounded and Randomize, both set to zero. As you can see, I already have these values set beforehand. You will probably have to change these manually, so go ahead and type those in. And once you do that, just click and drag on the canvas to create a polygon. I'm going to hold Control and then click and drag the mouse up like that so that it creates the polygon where the points are going vertically as opposed to horizontally. That right there is what we're looking for. Once we've done that, I'm going to take this, move this towards the center of the page. I want to bring the opacity of this down a little bit. I'm going to take this opacity over here and just drop that down roughly in half. And I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and just click and drag to scale that down. What I want to do now is duplicate this. I'm going to right click this and go to Duplicate. And I'm going to click and drag this up here until these two corners snap. So we get something like this here where there's this diamond shape intersecting between the two of them. And I want to make this red just so we can differentiate it from the original. Then I want to duplicate that object again. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. Come over here, snap this over to the left side over here, and then do that one more time. Right click, duplicate, and snap this one over to this right side like that. And with this red polygon still selected, I'm going to go to edit, select same, and click on fill color. And it's going to select all of the objects on your canvas that have the same red fill, which is these three objects right here. And I want to combine those together by going to Path, Combine. And once we've done that, I just want to click and drag over the entire thing entirely like that. So we have everything selected, including the red object and the original polygon in there. And then go to Path, Division. And what's going to happen after you do that, you can click off of the graphic to, to deselect everything. You'll notice this has been broken up into three individual parts here. So let me just undo that by hitting Control Z. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three individual sides for the dice here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the keyboard. And I'm going to click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And since this square is going to represent one of the sides of the dice, what I want to do is round the corners of this because as, a, as I demonstrated in the, um, in the thumbnail, the dice has rounded corners. So I'm going to take this little handle up here to the top right, this circle node. I'm just going to click and drag that down like that so we get some nice rounded, nice rounded corners like that. And now I want to create circles for the inside of this rectangle that represent the number on the dice. So I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. I want to make this a different color, so I'll make this green. Let me grab the Select tool and place this over here in the center. I mean the top left. Right click that, go to Duplicate, hold Control, click and drag this over to the right. And the reason why I'm holding Control is because it's locking it onto the vertical axis like that. And then I want to hold Shift and click on the other one so we have them both selected. Right click that, go to Duplicate, hold Control, click and drag these ones down here. And then click off of it to deselect everything. And then just take one of these right here right click them and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on the red rectangle so that you have the circle and the green rectangle uh, the, the red rectangle selected and center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that now if you notice here I made my circles a little too big so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag over those circles hold control and scale those down a little bit and I'll take this one hold shift click on both of those 
click and drag these down here, click off of the deselect. I'll take these ones as well, again, shift clicking them so we select them both, bring them over here. And let me try this again. I'll take this one in the center, hold shift, click on the, uh, the red rectangle there, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. That's good, now we can click off of that. Now what we wanna do is just make sure that we have these green ones in the corners centered up as well. So let me click on the green one right here, hold shift, click on the other four, on all four of them, and group them together by clicking this button that says group selected objects, or you could press control G, and then hold shift and click on the red rectangle and just center those up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And then we can go ahead and ungroup them. So this right here is going to represent one of the sides of the dice. Now I want to do what I want to do is create two more sides. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag over all of these, and I want to duplicate them by going to right click, by right clicking and going to duplicate, then hold control and just click and drag this over here to the right. Click off of it to deselect everything. I'm just going to delete these two circles right here. I'm going to click on it to select it and press delete. Same thing over here, press delete, so then we end up with the number three. And then finally, I will create one more of these. Right click it, go to duplicate, hold control, click and drag it to the right, click off of it to deselect, and then get rid of these on the, uh, on the sides here so that we, we have just the one in the middle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select all of these green ones right here. I'm gonna click and drag over those green objects to make sure you just select the green objects. Make sure you don't select the red object as well. Select just the green objects right there. Unify them together by going to path, union and then hold shift and click on the red rectangle and go to path difference and i want to do the same thing over here select all of these go to path union hold shift click on the red rectangle and go to path difference and then finally i'll come over here click on the green circle hold shift click on the red rectangle we don't have to do a union on these ones because it's just one object and go to path difference. So now we have our three sides to the dice here. So I'm going to click and drag over all of these. Let me hold control and shift and scale these down. And I want to place these over where they're going to be implemented. So I'm going to take this top one, the number five, put this on top. I'm going to take this over here, the number three, put this on the left. And I'll take the number one and put this on the right over here. And what I'm going to do is change the perspective of each of these objects so that they fit within this polygon. So let me zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. Let me click on just this red rectangle right here and go to path, path effects. And it's gonna open up the path effects menu. There it is right there. And with the path effects menu open, I'm going to press the plus icon. And what I'm looking for is perspective. So I'm gonna come up here to where the search icon is. I'm just gonna start typing P-E-R-S. And there we go, perspective envelope, that's what we want. And once we've done that, come over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And what we're looking for right here, if you notice, there's different, there's two different types of nodes. There's gray nodes inside of the object, and then there's white nodes on the corners. What we're looking for is the white nodes on the corners. That allows us to change the perspective. So let me zoom back out. Again, to zoom in and out, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. To move the page around, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Let me take this white node and snap this into the bottom corner of this top object. Let me take this white node and snap that into there. Take this node, snap it into there, and then this one into there like that. And now I will finalize that by going to path, object to path. Now let's do the same thing over here. Let's click on this. Go to, uh, we're gonna come over here to the path effects menu. Click on the, uh, the plus button right here. We're going to add perspective envelope and do the same thing. I'm gonna take this corner and snap it into here. Take this corner, snap it into here. This corner goes down here, and then this corner goes in here. And again, finalize that by going to path, object to path. And then I will do the same thing for this object as well. So let me select that, add a new path effect, perspective envelope, and then snap these to their respective corners as well. And then I'll put this one down there. And then again, we're going to finalize this by going to path, object to path. So let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold control, roll down the mouse wheel, zoom out. Let me grab the select tool. What I want to do now is put a little bit of space between these three sides because they're all touching each other, which is not visually correct for what we're trying to create. So let me select each of these red objects by shift clicking them 
and then just move them off of the, uh, the polygon for, for a, a brief moment. And I want to reduce their size by 95%. So I want to come up here to where it says width and height or W and H. I want to turn on the lock right here so it locks the proportions as we scale it. And right here, these units of measurement where it says PX, I'm going to change that to percentage. And I'm going to change the width to 95. So we're going to reduce the size by 95%, I mean by 5%. Hit enter. And then just change that back to pixels so that you can use that later on. And then let me click off of that to deselect everything. I want to take this object right here, hold shift, click on the left side of the polygon, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Do the same thing over here. Take this right, right side object, hold shift, click on the polygon, center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then finally, the same thing over here. We're going to center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And that's what we're looking for right there. A little bit of space between those, uh, those sides of the dice. Now what we want to do is click on one of the black objects in the background, the original polygon. You'll know you have it selected when you see the black stripe down here in the bottom left. Make sure you don't accidentally click the, uh, the red object. Click the black object in the back there and go to Edit, Select Same, and click on Fill Color. And it's going to select all three of those objects. And we want to unify those together. So let's go to Path, Union. And now I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. If you notice here, this is the reason why we're going to scale this up. If you notice here, the padding between the red object and the black object is thinner than the padding between these two red objects. I want to scale this up so that it matches that. Oops. I want to scale this up so that it matches that a little more closely. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and just scale it like that. If yours is too big, you may have to scale it down. Just, so just go ahead and manually adjust it so it looks about right. Right about there looks pretty good. And what I want to do now is round the corners of this um, polygon here. So to do that, I'm going to add another path effect. And the path effect I'm going to look for this time is called corners. Corners fillet chamfer, that's what we're looking for. Click on that. And I'm going to click this button right here that says add a fillet, or just click fillet. And now I'm going to come back over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And if you notice, we're going to have these green nodes in each corner. So let me click and drag over all of those green nodes. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to take one of those green nodes and just click and drag. And if you notice, it's going to round the corner as we do that. And that right there is what we're looking for. That looks perfect. So let me finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path. Let me grab the Select tool. We can close out of the Path Effects menu now. We shouldn't need that again. So we have the structure of the dice in place. All we have to do now is color it in. So let me take this top object right here and let me break it apart by going to Path, Break Apart. And then I want to hold Shift and click on the large red object so that, we just, so that it deselects it and we just have these circles selected. And I want to raise those circles to the top by clicking this button that says Raise Selection to the Top. And I want to make those white. And I want to do the same thing over here. Select this object. Path, break apart, hold shift, click on that red object to deselect it, make these white, and then raise them to the top. And then finally, the same thing over here. Select that, path, break apart, hold shift, click on the object to deselect it, make that white, raise it to the top. Now let me zoom back out. Let's click and drag over everything and bring the opacity of it all the way up. So let's click off it to deselect everything. Now what we can do is we can choose colors to use for our dice. I know in the thumbnail I used the color green. I think for this one I'll use blue. You can use whatever color you'd like. So I'm going to start with the base back here, the black object. And start with the darker variation of whatever shade you want to use. If you want to make your dice green, start with dark green. If you want to make it orange, start with a dark orange. I'm going to start with a dark blue over here. And then I'm going to click over here under the fill tab where it says... Um, linear gradient. I'm going to click that to give it a linear gradient. And then I'm going to grab the gradient tool, which is over here, or you can just press G on the keyboard. And if you notice, we have a dark blue on this stop and we have transparency on this stop. So let me click on that stop to select it. And I want to make this a lighter shade of the color we want. So since I'm using blue, I'm going to go with lighter shade of blue. Let me put this stop over here on the bottom. We want the dark one on the bottom. Take this one, the lighter one on top, hold control, bring this straight up so that it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. And uh, it, it may be helpful to turn off snapping at this point because snapping, we don't need it anymore and it's just going to get in the way from this point forward. So up here where it says enable snapping, we can disable that. 
And now I want to click on this red object right here. And I want to make this an even darker color than the dark shade of blue we used over here. So let me make this a dark shade of blue like that. That looks pretty good. And let me give that a linear gradient. And I want to take this dark side and put this to the top left corner. Take this one, bring it down here like that. And then I want to take this object right here and give that the same gradient. So I'll click on Linear Gradient. And instead of creating that again, we could just choose it from this list right here. It's this one we just created. Put this one right here like that. And put this one down here in the bottom right corner. There we go. And then up here, we're going to use an even lighter shade of our color than we used for up here. So I'm going to choose an even lighter shade of blue like that. Or maybe that looks pretty good. And then we will give that a linear gradient as well. Take this and put this down here, and then take the transparent stop and put it up top. You can hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. Now let me grab the select tool. Let me zoom out a little bit. If you can see, our dice, our vector dice is complete. What you can do now is click and drag over all of it, group it together with the group selected objects button, and I'm just going to give this a little bit of a tilt to make it look like it was just thrown. So let me select this. Let me click on it until we get the rotation handles. I'm going to hold control and take this corner node and just bring this counterclockwise one step like that. And then I want to right click this and go to duplicate, ungroup it, go to path, union, and then let's make this black. Click on it again to get back to the scaling handles. And I want to take this arrow up here in the top in the middle and then just bring this all the way down like that and click the button up here that says lower select lower selection to the bottom and then just bring the opacity of this down this is going to look somewhat like a casted shadow right there that and now that is looking perfect so i think that should do it for this tutorial that's how you can go about creating these vector dice illustrations using inkscape if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching